Frank, you were adamant. You were saying if you were Kylian Mbappe before this game, that you would stay at PSG because you got more chance of winning the Champions League at PSG than you would at Real Madrid going forward. Has tonight changed your mind? Ah, I will say a little bit, but I will okay. stay. I will stay at Paris Saint Germain because what I saw for. 90 minutes at the Parc des Princes and an hour at Santiago Bernabeu from Real Madrid couldn't convince me that uh, Real Madrid is better than Paris Saint-Germain and can win the Champions League. So uh, it's a big question. It's a question of dream. And if he dreams about going to Santiago Bernabeu, uh, well, it's fine by me and he, he could go. And, but I, I said before that two ties that uh, none of the two clubs will win the Champions League. And I still think that none of them was going to win the Champions League because comparing to many other clubs, you know, they they we, really weaker uh, in many, many many ways. Can I just come back, go back, sorry, to what Gab was saying? And I think the difference is between a mega star and a star. And he was naming the front line of Barcelona and with Suarez. With all due respect, with so many players, you know, who are stars like Suarez, they're not mega stars because the mega stars are the people who are known even by people who don't know anything about football. And we have four mega stars in the world of football: Ronaldo, Neymar, Messi, and Mbappe. The others are stars, but they're not big, big stars, and they are able to fill up a team spirit, which I think is harder for those players, especially if they play together. Those yeah, was, this, was this Mbappe's last Champions League match for PSG? I, I genuinely don't know. It's certainly pointing in that direction. I think, I think Mbappe, I, I think he is genuinely um, valuing, the, valuing the possibility of, of staying at Paris Saint-Germain. But equally, you know, he's been wanting Real Madrid since he was a kid and he had those posters of that guy, Cristiano Ronaldo, <laughs> up in his room. You know, when... when when he was sort of 10, 12 years old. And that's got a way on him. And I think when he looks around, he looks at how the club as a club are going to react. He's going to look at the fact that a year from now, uh, Messi and Neymar will be a year older. And remember, next season there is a World Cup in the middle of it all. And he starts thinking, man, Real Madrid, um, you know, I have a chance to write a new chapter. I have a chance to to take over from, from Benzema as, as the French emotional leader of this team. Um, I've, I've done so much at Paris Saint-Germain. We didn't win the big one, but maybe it is time to move on. I, 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 I mean, in terms of vibe, in terms of hunch, my guess he's going to, he's, he's going to go to Real Madrid and, and this is their last Champions League game. But like we said, uh, it could still change. Do you leave? I do. There is a cloud hanging over PSG that is not going to remove, be removed by Kylian Mbappe by himself. And, and that cloud is not going away anytime soon. I, honestly, what I saw today in the last 30 minutes of the game was one of those where you just turned the page on a team and on a club and you said, nah, until you resolve basic things that have to do with heart, soul, mentality, forget it. This team is not going to achieve the things that they're going to, that they think they should be achieving. To that point, then, Gab, is the project over? I, I don't like. I, there's a big picture answer to this, which says that, and this is what some people have been saying that you know uh, the Paris Saint Germain project, in terms of you know being financed to the degree it's been financed, was all about getting Paris Saint Germain to the, to the World Cup. Um, sorry, to to. to, to the, the Qatar World Cup, and then perhaps selling it, moving it on. It'll still be a big club, but in a different dimension. It just won't be a club this size. Equally, you've made the commitment to Neymar. You've made the commitment to Messi. You know, they have contracts, they have big contracts, and you're gonna wanna honor them and, and put the players around them to go and win. But certainly, you have to ask questions about whether Pochettino's gonna be back. You have to ask questions about a lot of players. I think you have to ask questions about Leonardo. Um, and I say this again, after seeing Jeannie Vinealdum's for 45 minutes this weekend, um, in which, you know, he touched the ball nine times in the first half, which is objectively difficult to do if you're playing in central midfield. Um, you know, I, I think Paris Saint-Germain have to evaluate, where are we? We're probably not going to shift Messi and Neymar unless they want to leave. Let's take the Mbappe on the chin 
and let's build something. Maybe with younger players, maybe with players with more of an upside. Let's get those worker bees around Messi and Neymar. Let's get the right manager in and let's have another go. I promise in a moment, Real Madrid fan, <laughs> just one more, one more point. Pochettino. Mm. Who is Pochettino? Bye-bye. Yeah, <laughs> you, you talk about a brand for a manager taking a does, does it, uh, uh, Sorry, does he, how much responsibility does he have to take from that last half hour? And how much can he actually do about what happened on the pitch and the way in which the players obviously choked? Right, you focus on the half hour, but then you forget on the year's worth of work. Right. Right? See, what we saw in the half hour is only the final product of a lack of cohesion and organization and structure that we have mentioned over this last 20 minutes or so uh, that he's responsible for. And then to see him just kind of standing there, seeing it happen and not do something about it, not react to it, not being able to, to, to feel it, to sense it, to jump ahead of the curve and say, look, this thing is shifting. We have to be able to change something. We have to shift players around. We have to, to take somebody off the field. We have to make the big decision. It's like, look, if Neymar is not giving you the work, you got to take him off the field. You got to have that power as a manager and saying, but, right now we need something different from this game. I, we need to change it. We need to spin it. We need to get organized. And he's just standing like this. That vision of the manager as things are getting out of control and him is just arms crossed and just letting it happen, that is a referendum on Pochettino, regardless of the individual mistakes that happen on the field. Don't gap. I'm a massive Pochettino fan, uh, as you know, but this isn't the Pochettino from Tottenham Hotspur. This isn't the guy that got so much out of it. And anybody who remembers those teams, they played a completely different football uh, from this one. Those were teams that had the work ethic, uh, they had the pressing, they obviously had less quality. It almost seems to me, and this goes back to what, to what Frank said earlier, is that Pochettino arrived and said, I've got Neymar and Messi. I cannot ask Neymar and Messi to go and do what I used to ask Harry Kane and Hong Min Son to do, because those are different types of players. Um, so I'm not going to be, you know, Mr. Arrogant, my tactics are going to win this. I'm going to give you the freedom. Now, if you have a superstar and you're going to give him that kind of freedom, you have to know how to do it. You have to read the moment. You have to know how to handle them. And you have to put the pieces around them and get the pieces to work. Um, and obviously, he hasn't been able to do that. And like I said, it's not just tonight. It's, it's really since he arrived. Um, <clears throat> this has not felt like a team. And it certainly hasn't felt like a Pochettino team. I think the only people who can be happy tonight are all those people at Old Trafford who supposedly can't wait for Mauricio Pochettino to go there. If you go to Old Trafford, obviously there's a vacant spot then at PSG. Your boy Zidane, Frank. Would you want it? Do you think he'd want it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just have one concern about that. He's a guy from Marseille. He has his uh, face painted on the big wall, you know, in the big building in Marseille. If he <laughs> does that, he would be betraying Marseille. So I don't know, yeah. you know. I, I, I can't even compare with somebody else. It's like, it's like Messi one day being the coach of Real Madrid. What do you think would happen? That's exactly what I want to go. And uh, or Maldini being the coach of uh, Paolo Maldini being the coach of Inter Milan. What people will say. So I don't know if he will do that. In a way, I would love to see that because I want to see if him, if, some, if finally somebody can change the mentality of that squad, of that club, uh, uh, of that dressing room. I would love to see that, see that, but I'm not in uh, Zidane's head. I don't know what he wants, and I'm not sure it's going to happen. Right. Hey. <laughs> Kareem Benzema is very good. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. And the third goal. Now, the, 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 other, the other finishes were, were, were wonderful from Benzema, and the movement of the ball in those finishes were wonderful. The pressure on Donnarumma, whether you think it's a foul or not, but the initial pressure was there, and then the finish, second goal, finds himself in a really good position, movement of the ball, turn, finish. The third goal is just you, the definition of world class. As the ball comes out to him, 
He's already seeing where Donnarumma is. He's already anticipating where the defenders are. And he knows in a fraction of a second, I take this with the outside of my right foot, I have a chance. If I take this with the outside of my right foot, Donnarumma cannot react in time. The defenders can't get to me. They can't close out in the space. This is a moment in which where everybody else is moving, is moving at a certain speed and everybody else is freaking out, Karim Benzema, calm, calm to be able to execute in a moment of high pressure. That is a world-class player. He just seems to get better and better with age, Frank. Yes, he's the only French pride of the night, I would say, today. <laughs> yes. uh, the guy is absolutely fantastic. I mean, 34, 34 years old. Remember the first, uh, the first leg, I said, he's not ready. I, I don't see the point to put him because he won't sell the, yeah. his team uh, the way he should. But since then, I think he scores three goals in three games in, uh, in La Liga, and tonight three goals. And as, as Ali said, the cleverness of his uh, third goal is absolutely magical. And uh, the guy, you know, uh, after having served Ronaldo the best he could, he became the skipper of that team. And without him, I can tell you, Real Madrid would never be the Real Madrid we can see now. Uh, obviously, Gav, there's a lot of speculation. We mentioned Kylian Mbappe. Uh, I wish we, I'll, go first, I'll go first because I wanted to, give, I wanted to switch to, to Luka Modric and say how on earth Real Madrid going to replace him because once again tonight he showed why he won the Ballon d'Or and why he is held in such high regard. I think with Modric, what you're seeing as he gets older uh, and, and great players who, who get older, um, they know their bodies so well. They know how to pace themselves. They know exactly how many times they can sprint throughout a game and make it so they, they should pick their spots for when they make it count. Um, very little is wasted with Modric. Uh, he's, he's got such an eye for it. You saw it at the, the weekend as well, the way he linked up with, uh, with, with Camavinga against Russell Piedad. Um, he really is a gem. And can he be replaced? No, he, he can't be replaced. Uh, what he decides to hang up his boots, and I think he's going to stick around another year. Uh, it's going to have to necessarily be somebody different, somebody interpreting the position differently uh, than he does. Because, you know, tonight he was, not just him, but he was absolutely monumental. How much admiration do you have for him? Oh, I love me some Luka Modric. And the more you watch him play, the more you appreciate the little things that he does in the game. And, and how he has such a great feel for what the team needs in that particular moment. Tony Cruz, because of whatever injury he's carrying, a hamstring, eh, he was largely ineffective. So where was the passing going to have to come from? Well, it was going to have to come from Luka Modric. Where was the run running out of the midfield going to have to come from? From Luka Modric as well. If the defending was is what the team needed, then he was willing to do that. It's, it's, it is when you see Luka Modric, it's the full picture of what a midfielder should be. And, and he does so many good things for this team that perhaps go unnoticed because we're paying attention to Vinicius, because we're paying attention to Benzema, and rightfully so. This guy's in the final third, obviously put that final touch on the ball, put that final, that final goal, that game-winning goal, those moments that we think of. But it all came from something that possibly and potentially was all introduced into the play because of Luka Modric. He sees a bigger picture than everybody else and a clearer picture than everybody else on the field, and his execution is magnificent. Isn't it funny? Mm. When we and you were in Spain together in August, opening weekend, Benzema, Bale, Hazard mm -hmm. was the front three. Not even mentioned. No. Nope. Not even. Not even on the. Not even in the build-up to the game. No one's talking about Hazard or Bale. After the game, no one's saying, "Well, they did it without these two world-class players." That's how forgotten they are. Yeah. Oh, they're beyond an afterthought. It's. It's. They're no longer part of the conversation. Yeah. Even today, when Real Madrid are chasing the game and they're gonna need, they need goals. They need. They need somebody to do something different, or or they're pushing forward. You're not looking down the bench and saying, <clears throat> "In." Hey, Hazard, come on this way. No, no, he's not even an option. Yeah. Bale, nowhere to be found. You, you're looking for other players. It's Rodrigo, and it's Asensio, and Modric, and Vinicius Jr., and Benzema. And the quality of Karim Benzema is just... Uh, 
at an entirely different level than everybody else. And you add that with Modric and Vinicius, who was active throughout the course of the nights. He, he was always dangerous. He was always forcing Hakimi back to defend, which then limited the outlet on the right-hand side from PSG. Real Madrid should be very proud of how much of a team effort this was and how much of an organized group this was. And it was very clear to see one team on the field and a bunch of guys running around on the other half. So you guys are Mr. Negative now. Sure, go ahead. Frank, if you're in the quarterfinals, you were saying you want to be drawn with Real Madrid. Again, can you say that again? If I want to play against Real Madrid? Yes. In the quarterfinal? Yes. Uh, uh, well, in, in a way, no, because, you know, with the history of the, of, the, of the club, you always say that it will be easy to beat them, but they always manage to do well. So you have to, you, of course, you have to respect them. They won it 13 times. They, they're absolutely fantastic club. But, you know, I don't know. It would have been another team that Paris Saint-Germain today. I think they would have been out of the of the of the competition with what they showed for for 90 minutes away from home and 60 minutes at home. Uh, I would question Mark. I don't know why Rodrigo didn't play uh, comparing to Asensio. I think he, he changed the game as well. Frank's almost losing his voice. Mm, it's very emotional. It's like Craig Burley's yeah, dream. Yeah, yeah. I've got a flu. I've got a flu. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.